Welcome everybody. Just a few technicalities before we start. So for all participants, by default, your mic and camera is turned off. If you have any questions, please either raise hand. That's the feature that available in the participants menu, or just post your question to the chat. And what we'll try to do, I'll try to unmute you so you can get a bit of an interaction with the speaker and you can ask your question uh, yourself. All right, so uh, for today's seminar, so uh, for those of you attending for the first time, so for, uh, for our flow seminar stands for Federated Learning One Word Seminar. It was created to provide a global online forum for dissemination of latest scientific research in all aspects of the learning that might include distributed optimization, learning algorithms, privacy, cryptography, uh, communication compression, and <clears throat> many more. Uh, for today's talk, it might, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Alexander Turin, uh, who is a postdoc at uh, KAUST, uh, and in his research, he's working on modern optimization tasks. And prior to joining KAUST, he defended his uh, PhD at High School of Economics. And today, he's going to tell us about improv theoretical computation complexity for distributed optimization. So, Thank you, Sasha, for agreeing to give a talk and, and looking forward to this stage yours. Okay, thank you, Sema. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and today I want to present our new work, which we called F21 P and Friends. And the, the, in this uh, work, we developed uh, a new bidirectional distributed algorithms that uh, improve for uh, theoretical uh, communication complexity bound. And my talk is based on the uh, paper which we uh, uploaded to Archive with the same title. Uh, so this is a joint work with Sky Grantowska. She's right now a master student at the University of Oxford and uh, Peter Richterich, he's a professor at Kaus. Uh, so I start with introduction and uh, explain so we, in our problem, we want to solve the minimization. We want to minimize function f, which is, uh, uh, which is um, the sum of functions fi, where m is the number of workers. Uh, so here d in my talk will be the number of parameters, features. And fi are the functions that are stored on some on devices. And each device uh, contain its all unique functions of i. So in general, we assume that uh, we have arbitrarily different and heterogeneous data sets or functions. So here I try to illustrate our technical setup. So again, uh, we have here three devices and every device holds its own function f. And these devices, they communicate with some uh, server. And under this setup, we assume that communication is the bottleneck. So the, uh, every information that communicates between these two devices, uh, uh, so this is, can be, um, this, trans uh, this transformation uh, will can be potentially very slow. Uh, and in my talk, I want to distinguish two types of communication. So I will discuss worker to server communication. And the second one is server to worker communication. Uh, so before I present some really advanced algorithms, I want to start with some, some the most simple baseline and want to analyze how this baseline works. So I will analyze the vanilla gradient descent method. So first I'll introduce assumptions. So uh, some typical and weak assumptions. So first it assumes that function F is ellipses. And the second assumption here, I consider, uh, I assume that function F is mu strongly convex. Uh, so, okay. And uh, now I'm just considering the simplest, the vanilla gradient descent method that uh, does this step. So it just takes 60 plus one, take the previous point and uh, 
uh, subtract from xt gamma multiplied by gradient at point xt. And uh, like we have the classical theory that says that after t number of these iterations, where t is equal to this uh, guy, we can guarantee that gradient descent will converge uh, in this sense. And uh, I mean, this is just the classical result that one can find in every optimization book. And let's just remember the distortion complexity and we will work with it later. Okay, so now let's try and understand how will gradient descent work in our problem. So in the first step, the workers will calculate the gradient. In the next step, they will send this gradient to the server. Then the server will aggregate these gradients. Uh, it will, the server will does gradient step. And then it broadcasts uh, the point xt plus one back to the uh, workers. So now we want to understand the communication complexity of this procedure. So, so, the, so we define here communication complexity is the number of communicated coordinates before we get an epsilon solution. So let's uh, so we know this, like since gradients and iterates are from Rd, it means that the communication complexity of gradient descent equals to D multiplied by it, uh, by the this uh, uh, guy. So basically, uh, up to logarithmic factor, we get D multiplied by condition number, which is quite expected result, and everything here is pretty simple, I believe. Okay, so now let's move to more advanced algorithms that like in some sense, it's like some baseline and we want to try and improve this uh, rate. So let's move to some, and we want to try to, and we want to solve this problem using compression. So what means? It means that instead of gradients, each worker will send some uh, compressed vectors. And I will explain in the next slide what it means, what it means compression. Right now with just some abstract, let's assume that some abstract operator. And idea of compressions, of course, is not novel. I mean, there are, I don't know, hundreds of papers that consider compression for, uh, in this sense. So there's Diana, Kanit, F21, classical EF algorithm, QSGD, DCHD, Marina, Dasha, and there are many more. And now my goal, like now it's still introduction. My goal is let's focus on the Diana method. And uh, right now, let, for, for, who, for, for those who is not familiar with this Diana method, this is just some black box method that, and that uh, compresses uh, vectors from workers to serve. And uh, so let me first uh, recall what is unbiased compression operator. So unbiased compression operator, it's some mapping from RD to RD such that it's unbiased, so it's random, unbiased. And also uh, the following, th this inequality holds. So here is important that here we have some omega. Omega in some sense describes uh, the variance of this compressor. And one particular like classical example of compressor is random key compressor. So uh, it takes some vector, full vector. And then in this case, if K, if we take in random k, k equal one, it randomly preserves only one coordinate and zero out others. And also it multiplies by five in order to preserve unbiasedness. And then, uh, I don't know, in, and uh, we assume that uh, this, um, uh, we, uh, the, uh, when we apply compressors, uh, we get, uh, statistically independent results. So for example, in the next iteration of our algorithm, uh, like it can be possible that compressor will return minus L and this, uh, and this sampling, uh, they are independent. And for this compressor, one can show that this inequality holds for this, uh, for D over K minus one. So in this case, Omega will be equal to four. Okay, so in order to, present you um, Diana's condorance rate, I need two additional assumptions also weak. And the first assumption that 
for individual functions of I, we assume that they are uh, uh, li. Uh, so here's, I mean, there's, sorry, there's type, but there should be li smooth. Uh, so they're li smooth. And here we define L max as the maximum of, of allies. And also we assume that each fi is, each function fi is convex. And so under this assumptions, one can show that the other method converges with this rate. And uh, here comparing with the rate of gradient descent. So gradient descent is, in gradient descent, we, we have only this guy. But here we get two others. And here we have like, one L max we define as maximum of allies, and omega is the variance of the compressors. Omega is exactly what how uh, uh, I defined uh, in previous slide unbiased compressors. So it, uh, uh, it's this it's uh, uh, and um, uh, sorry and also another quantity here is n is the number of workers. And now. So what, we have a method, some black smoke method, we have a rates and we want to understand if this method improves our, like our baseline, our vanilla gradient descent method. And so again, we know that uh, the communication complexity gradient descent is the, uh, has the, the following rate. And now let, let's just for simplicity consider that we work with random key compressors and we know that omega is equal to D or K minus one. Then the worker to serve communication complexity of Diana will be equal. This time, instead of D, we will have here K because we send only K coordinates multiplied by the iteration complexity of Diana. And using simple algebra, one can show that same things equal to this one. And then here we use the bound on L max. So for convex functions, one can show that this inequality holds. And it means that no matter what, like uh, the other method improves gradient descent. So in the worst case, I mean, uh, it's possible that these rates are the same, but in, in general, there are, there are some problems where Diana's rates can be uh, significantly better. Okay, but uh, server to work communication is still a problem. I mean, the other method and other like, like classical AF method or Marina, they still uh, send the full non-compressed vectors from server to the workers. So in some sense, we solve the problem only in one direction, but in another direction, uh, the problem, uh, we have still a problem here. So that's why uh, like people consider bi-directional methods and uh, so the uh, so the natural question here is it possible to develop like Diana a method uh, that will guarantee uh, the communication complexity in both direction better or at least not worse than gradient descent. So we want to, to develop some method that will also compress uh, our vectors, our information from the server to the workers. And here I present the previous SOTA methods. Uh, with bidirectional compression. So, I mean, for, so I assume that these methods are for previous SOTO, SOTO methods. For example, this method by Philippe uh, was uh, was accepted to near it 2021. So this is some recent methods uh, which work with bidirectional compression. And here we have two omegas. One omega is the omega which we get from the compression from server to workers, and another omega is that we get from the uh, uh, from workers to server. And one uh, first observation we can see that these uh, uh, variances they interact in some not linear way. I mean, so here we have like mm, they're multiplied, multiplied depends, and here we have some. So we have dependent three, like on omega, the carriers have omega to the power three over two. So, but this is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem that using the same reasoning as before, one can show that in the worst case, these methods with these rates, they don't guarantee. Uh, so they, in the worst case, can get the, uh, the communication 
complexity worse, worse than the communication complexity of baseline gradient descent method. So this is in some sense not very good. So like we have a method and we can be unlucky, we can get some problem and get uh, the communication and our algorithms will work slower than, than what there is no compression, I mean, in some sense. So now I want to present our new method, which we call if 21 plus Diana. And here, so this is, uh, so the uh, the iteration complexity of here 21 plus the element presented in the last row and so the first iteration that uh dependent on this omegas uh, on the variances of compressors is linear here so they don't interact in the complexity so this is uh, um, and the second thing is that what well, one reason actually why we call it if 21 plus Diana, because actually the rate of this method is the rate of Diana plus some additional quantity. This is some penalty which we get from the fact that we compress from the server to the work. Okay, so uh, I, I will I will just show you. I will return to this algorithm. I'll just uh, try very briefly illustrate how it looks, but then I will return in, in the end of my talk. So basically, it consists of two parts. For two parts, we took just from Diana, this one. And the second part is the null one. And this method just, uh, so it sends compressed message to the server and broadcast messages to on workers. But okay, I'm illustrate this algorithm just to show that it's uh, indeed exists, but I will return to it. Okay, another thing is that here, we uh, actually can support a more general family of compressors. So here, like if from the workers to the server, Diana only supports unbiased compressors, here we support biased compression. So in some sense, this is a more general, general family of compressors. And this family, for example, includes uh, the top K and the random K compressors. So it can be shown that th these compressors are uh, they, they don't belong don't belong to unbiased compressors, but they belong to this one. And this is one uh, like uh, some also like some additional improvement of our method. Okay, so now let's just uh, show that indeed the communication complexity of EF twenty one P plus Diana is indeed better than communication complexity of gradient descent. So let's, for simplicity, assume that we use random K compressors in the worker to server communication. So we know that omega is equal to this guy. Uh, and we take top K compressor in server to worker communication. And one can show that uh, this alpha from here is for top K is equal to K over D. And let's estimate the communication complexity of Diana. So the workers and servers they send k coordinates and we know that the expression complexity of our new method uh, is uh, uh, equal to this thing and again using uh, simple uh, algebra one can show that this thing is always less than equal than one then the and then uh, the communication complexity of gradient descent map. so this is and uh, this is uh, happens for any k, so even for k equal one. Okay, and it's not just like, and in practice, I mean, the, this communication complexity can be much better than gradient descent for two reasons. In practice, for top k and other bias compressors, alpha parameter of bias compressors can be much larger than work k sub bounds. Also, Lmax uh, in practice can be much smaller than its upper bound and L. But really important that even we are not lucky and consider a really bad problem where alpha is indeed equal to KD over D and L max is huge, we still guarantee the communication complexity that it's not worse than gradient descent. And uh, as far as we know, this is the first bidirectional method with this guarantees. Okay, here I present some experiments and um, 
just ignore for a second uh, this red line. So red line here is just another method, uh, which in practice can be much better than uh, EF21 plus Diana. So the blue line here is the Diana method, and the yellow line here is the and here is our new method EF21 P plus Diana. On the left plot, we can see the dependence, how the function value decreases with the number of bits or coordinates sent from the workers to server. And on the right plot, you can see the number of bits sent from the server to workers. So on the left plot, we can see that the performance of our new method and Diana are similar, but it's expected. We didn't try to improve uh, the, uh, we didn't try to improve the communication complexity works to the server. But the communication complexity from the server to workers is like much better. And here we have log scale. So we convert, so like we send uh, almost uh, a thousand times less coordinates than uh, the Diana method. So in some sense, it's like, and we do it for free here. And uh, here we use top K compressor and the uh, top K compressor in practice works like very well. Okay, and other contributions. So also like we develop EF21 plus the CGD method. So it's uh, uh, some method also that can work better in the interpolation regimes, in the regimes when the, uh, uh, so I, Inter inter regimes when the um, local gradients of functions of i at optimal points equal to zero. And also we analyze CF21 plus Diana with uh, stochastic gradients. Okay, so it seems like that we have some improvement in convex regime, but we didn't stop there and we decided to understand how it works in non-convex with non-convex problem. So first, let me introduce the current state of uh, uh, of the methods that that uh, 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 that uh, compress only from the worker to the server. So all these methods here, they broadcast, they don't compress from the server to the worker. And this method, they try to find some x such that uh, so here we. Uh, have non-convex problems. So we try to find some x such that uh, the norm of gradient uh, squared less than or equal than epsilon. And uh, I mean, uh, th these methods and these rates are the current state of the art rates. And like, you can ask me uh, why do we have different state of the art rates? Because for example, let's just compare DCGD with Marina. And one can see that uh, this method has better dependence on epsilon because here we have epsilon squared, here we have epsilon. But this method has depend better dependence on n, while Marina has square root of n dependence. So in some sense, this GD can be better than Marina uh, in the regimes when we have a large no number of nodes, which is the case, for example, for federate learning, or in the regimes we, when we don't need uh, a really uh, like good accurate solution. Also, I include here uh, like EF21 method. And uh, despite the fact that this thing is always larger than this, EF21, it supports, so these two methods, this is the Marine, it works only with unbiased compressors. EF21 works with biased compressors, so it's, it's, it's more general but it has the price for this because it doesn't scale with the number of nodes. And uh, so we took DCGD as a default method. And um, so we analyzed, uh, we, analyzed uh, we developed a new method EF21P plus DCGD. And one can see that uh, 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 Samuel, are you here? Um, uh, excuse me, I, am I still connected to this talk? 
Yes, you are. Yes, it's yeah, 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 because you disappeared yeah. because I, I'm afraid that maybe I, I lost connection. Sorry. Okay, so and again, one can see that comparing to the uh, previous methods, uh, our method uh, with and this method, uh, like comparing to the previous table, this uh, in this table I provide method that uh, uh, that uh, has bidirectional compression. And our method uh, is the like uh, the first one uh, that uh, decouples the complexities, so decouples the omegas from these compressions. And uh, in the regimes where n is large, uh, our new method provides a new state of the art for the bidirectional compressed method in, in the field of bidirectional compressed method. But also in our paper, uh, we also try to understand if it's possible to improve the dependence on epsilon. And uh, like, for example, we can improve it in the strong growth assumptions. Uh, and this strong growth assumptions uh, assumption, it calls for many deep learning tasks, tasks for example. Okay, so now uh, like I had a, like, Title where the first word is the F21P also have some methods which call uh, that have some f 20 but what is 21 F21P? And let's so F21P is the method which I provide here. And basically it is gradient descent method, but here instead of XT, we take some WT. And a WT we it's uh, we find using this recursion. And here CT is the bias compressor, so some uh, uh, random mapping which has uh, this property. And uh, uh, like it's, it's based on the EF21 uh, EF21 mechanism, which works in the dual space. So in EF21. Uh, uh, it also updates some state, but instead of xt plus one, there is the gradient at xt plus one. But uh, it turns out uh, that this EF21P is equivalent to the classical EF mechanism. So by taking ET equal to this, one can show that this. Uh, uh, the, we can get uh, these two recursions. And uh, for those who are familiar with e, classical EF, this is just uh, the definition of EF mechanism. But uh, we still we believe that uh, EF21P can be interesting on its own uh, because this is some, in some sense, not trivial reformulation of the EF, EF. And also it generates, the EF21P generates the uh, uh, different sequences. So WT plus one the same, but here we have ET plus one, here we have XT plus one. And uh, this reformulation and this uh, led us uh, to the methods that provide new state of the art uh, theoretical bounds in bidirectional, uh, with bidirectional compression. Um, so, okay, let me return to our method EF21P plus Diana. So EF21 plus Diana uh, consists of two parts. So we have Diana part, so up, and we have a new part, EF21P here. And the difference between uh, like uh, original Diana and this method is that Diana just takes 60 plus one and broadcasts it to, to the workers. Here, instead of this, we use EF21P mechanism so this is basically I rewrited the recursion that we that I provided in the previous slide, and uh, this method uh, works pretty well and provides. Uh, and this is the first bidirectional method in the that improves the classical vanilla gradient descent method. So here's the literature that I used in my uh, talk. So I'll stop here for two seconds. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Sasha, for, for, for a very nice talk. Uh, yeah, are there any questions? Just as a reminder, 
please either raise your hand or pose your question to the chat. All right, there is a question from Constantine. Let me just try to unmute him. So Constantine, please go ahead. I, I can see the... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah this is a short question. So yeah, uh, so the question is actually this about the Diana part. So for Diana, for client to server communication, there is a, I can, as a user of this algorithm, use only unbiased compressors, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so the compressor from workers to the server only um, can be only unbiased, yeah. but uh, from the server to workers can be biased. Yes, thank, you. thank you for the nice talk. So I mean, so I uh, so as far as I know, all attempts to 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 do the like bias compressors in both direction and up with the rates that. In worst case, are worse than gradients. And so, in some sense, maybe we don't know, we don't know, but maybe it's necessary in some sense. But who knows? Maybe the one day he will, someone will provide. Thank you. Um, so, is this probably answering the next question? I mean, the, yes. So, so Ilya, Ilya asked me if it's possible to do the bias compressions in both directions. So, we don't know. And previous attempts like failed. Like as far as I know. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. So, similar. Yeah, there's, will you read there's the, the, Yeah, there is the next question by Arto, but I'll I'll try to unmute him so he can ask himself. Yeah. So, um, you you are comparing uh, communication complexity with gradient descent, uh, but Proxkeep has a better communication complexity than gradient descent. So my question is: Have you tried to compare? Communication complexity of this EF twenty four MP plus Diana with it. Uh, okay, so now I, I was comparing it with just gradient descent. Of course, in convex case, um, like uh, we have another good method, which is called accelerated gradient descent method. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is method the like best one. Like it's like the final point, but. I'm just saying that this, like, we like, there's a milestone here that we want to be at least better than gradient descent. And before that, it wasn't accomplished. Here, it's like the first uh, method that, like, uh, that achieved this milestone. And then, of course, there are many other milestones that we want to achieve. And this is not the final point. And of course, proskip. Pers ah, okay, proskip. Okay, so with proskip, as far as I remember, you get there. So in gradient descent, you get one over. So you get condition number in proskip. You get square root of condition number, right? Uh, the number of iterates. Yes. Yes. Not not the number of iterates. Number of communication rounds. Okay, let's just take condition number equal uh, to one. Then, uh, then, then uh, I mean, gradient descent will be will have the same communication complexity as gradient descent. So in this regime, uh, it's better. I mean, it's just uh, of course it's like uh, it's just the regime where it's better. Yes. Yes. So maybe, so, uh, maybe I'll offer a comment. I was trying to sleep here, but uh, the talk is too interesting. So, um, so one comment, just general comment, uh, is that. Um, so what we try to do here is to understand the limits of what you can achieve with this trick called communication compression. So it's a very widespread trick. Hundreds, if if not a few thousands, of papers are written on that topic. And people say it's a really good thing to do, compress communication. So yes, uh, uh, of course, asking question of the type, can we do acceleration? So this is all completely valid question, but it, but we don't even understand the trick, the communication compression, even without acceleration in the bidirectional uh, setups. And this is what uh, uh, Sasha Turin is trying to do in this talk to understand first that trick alone without some extra tricks, because even that much simpler setup, we don't understand properly. So that, that is 
how uh, we believe science should be done, that you try to go to depth rather than to breadth. It's possible uh, to combine maybe acceleration and uh, um, compression in some simple way and get really bad bounds in the bidirectional setup. But uh, one wants to really understand the limits of the trick. Any other questions? Yeah, maybe I would have a very like a quick one. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's it's again it's about the uh like the the breadth of of, of this. Like, uh, is this naively? Uh, can you naively extend it to partial participation scenario or no? I I think because usually for uh when you do bidirectional compression it's, and and you want to get a good rate, it's it's not trivial and. It looks to me that also won't be case. In, it won't be easy in your case as well, right? Yes, it's definitely okay. won't be easy. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, because now, like we have, we don't communicate the full. Uh, we don't communicate the full iterates yet. Now we yes. we communicate something, some other stuff, and now, yeah, we. So in our paper, we don't discuss it. I mean, I think it's a very nice question. I know, I know that, for example, in previous methods, they they do partial participation with bidirectional method. But uh, for example, they uh, so I'm, I mean they I'm not uh, I'm not sure about the setting and the assumption that they have, but uh, uh, the approach. So for example, they paid. With the large, so they have to hold state for each client, and uh, so it's, if you want to do partial participation with bidirectional compression, probably you will require it will be required to get a huge. You will need a huge memory. So I mean, it's not so simple. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Then we have uh, two participants raised hand. So. Let's start with Michal. Yes, so please, Michal, go ahead. Yeah, just a follow up question. Um, so, if you look at partial participation, um, can you consider like both scenarios? Like, what what is better for me? Like, sending once in a while, like full uh, gradient, like all dimensions, instead of the K top, or um, send the K top more frequently. So, as part of you propose to send the pool with some small probability, or, or yeah, yeah, like what's what's the trade off between like like in I, mean, I can do also something like in between, like increase K but decrease the probability of transmission. That's uh, okay. probably just uh, one attempt to solve this problem. We probably it's a good solution we didn't analyze it so i mean maybe it's time for you to go and write a new paper with this idea <laughs> yeah i mean so it's probably yeah but um, now it will now we have to decide to how to choose this probability so there's some well i have that... i have to say that uh, it is a special case uh, in some sense of our method so if if you have you can design a compressor which does exactly this and it would fit into our framework. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so in fact, uh, random K is a special case, but uh, this this is called a Bernoulli compressor with uh, some high probabilities. You send everything and small probability, uh, maybe just one thing and so on. So, so one can explore these special cases as well. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Uh, yeah, then we have Yegor. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk, uh, Sasha. Um, I wanted to ask um, maybe about your intuition uh, like re regarding this successful combination because as far as I remember, EF21 does not um, kind of improve upon the, the gradient descent. Uh, I can comparison to Diana and- uh, No, no, it's, it's, it's can improve. It's, 
it's um, it's uh, at the rate that are not worse than gradient descent. Actually, I mean, if you take top k for example, you it's it's not worse. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. um, up to, up to so here it's also very important to understand where we work. We work in convex or non-convex domain because uh, in non-convex domain it's not so simple because there, for example, here I crucially use this uh, inequality on L max. So L max is less or equal than M L. Yes. But in non convex regime, we cannot use their, their potentially local Lipschitz constant, they can just flow out. And uh, the, the L that is this, and the Lipschitz constant of the function L, of the function L, can be equal, even equal to zero. So it's, uh, and so, okay, up to, up to smoothness constant, the, one can show that EF21 is not worse than gradient descent. Okay, but, but, but can it sorry, improve can, but, upon gradient descent? No, of, I mean, in some sense, mm -hmm. it can improve because half there in F21, this uh, contraction parameter, it's like when you analyze, it's like worst case parameter, right? But in practice, uh, and in some sense, it's method. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's another topic. Maybe even Peter can <laughs> better uh, like give more information about this, but I'm I can just. Yeah, I'm happy alpha. This alpha is, yeah, alpha. This alpha is. This can be like the effective alpha can be much larger. So, um, yeah. Sorry. Right. So, so if you look at the EF twenty one uh, dual or EF twenty one, there's the same method uh, theory. Then um, Sasha is right that uh, in some setup, if you choose, let's say, top K compressor and so on, then you get the same complexity, the worst case uh, communication complexity is greatness. Uh, and, and the theory does not create a separation bit, uh, from greatness. So it does not improve in the sense that we can show there is a gap. We can only hope for there to be gap. And this is because the contractive factor alpha uh, could potentially be exactly what it is in theory. And if that worst case thing happens, then uh, we don't improve. But if instantaneous contractive factor is always much better, then this would be better. Uh, but uh, this is not something uh, that uh, we can analyze. We can only just look at the theorem and say, okay, if that happens to be the case, then, uh, then we get better behavior. But the theory itself does not work with anything uh, with the notion of instantaneous uh, contraction factors. So, so this is already going really beyond the theory and trying to understand what might happen if uh, throughout the iterative process. However, what is key and what uh, I guess uh, uh, Yego you are after here is that the way we use you, we use EF21 primal here is not on the clients, but on the master. And that is really, really key difference. If we used it on the clients, we wouldn't um, get this result, but uh, it's really used on the master and master is only single node. So it's something like error feedback, but used uh, on a single node because there's just one master. The clients, they use Diana or DCGD. And these methods, both if they are used alone, they do improve upon gradient descent, provably if let's say L max is uh, uh, not that much larger than, um, than the allies. Okay, yeah, thank you. And um, I have a follow-up a question on that. Um, like, I'm, I'm sorry if I missed it, this from the presentation, but did you compare the communication complexity to just um, uh, naive uh, Diana? Um, that doesn't improve upon that. Um, no, I didn't, but um, I'm not, I mean, it's like, I, I, I think that in the worst case, probably too, it can be worse than Diana. This new method can be worse. And it's expected because like, like, because our new method in some sense has less information than Diana. So we could on, so in, in experiments, I mean, I didn't cherry pick. I mean, it looks like in like yeah, in yeah. practice, I, yeah, I, uh, 
so the only hope is that this alpha is so for example some top key or some uh, another clever compressor contractive can uh, can really good uh, compress so without uh, without losing a lot of information so in these cases if it's, then uh, they have like in, in experiments they have the same performance but uh, I, i'm pretty sure that it can be easily shown that our new method will be worse than diana in general case but i mean that's the price for bi-directional compression so i don't think that's like so yeah. Can I can I follow up on this? So I believe, and Sasha, you can correct me if I'm wrong. So did you answer the question assuming that the downlink compression doesn't matter and it's uh, and it's free? Is that what you assumed in your answer? Because that seemed to me that you were assuming where in the setup where Diana shines, which is the downlink downlink uh, cost is zero. Yes. Yes, yeah. but, ah, I okay. so, but I think what uh, Igor really wanted to ask was the bidirectional setup, in which case we definitely uh, improve because Diana ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. increases yeah. the number of communication rounds yeah. and it doesn't exactly. compose anything because the downlink is uh, untouched. But yeah, our yeah, method yeah. is even better than G. I was talking, yeah, yeah, I was talking in the case when downlink is uh, zero, so the cost for downlink is zero, then of course we will be war but yes so i think it's good exercise to understand yes because in the regime we care about the bidirectional we are better than gradient descent and that and gradient descent is better than diana in bidirectional regime right because diana only increases the number of iterations and uh, since it doesn't compress the downlink it doesn't gain anything so it's even worse yeah i mean it's but to check Good question. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think it's a nice question. Thank you for the talk. So, the, so the I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I need to take some paper and write. Okay. <laughs>